been interviewed. After driving around for 45 minutes without any luck, I reluctantly brought him back to our hotel room and quickly set up two cameras. So, Dimitri, can you tell me a little bit about your organization? Пока мы готовим людей для того, чтобы участвовать первое в осуществлении получения власти или захвата власти, пользуясь этим моментом, вторых для того, чтобы люди получив власть, как говорят, мало взять власть, важно ее удержать удержать власть и использовать ее для целей <coughs> подъема русского народа. Right now, what are they using some of their training for? Um, a lot of these uh, videos we've seen on the internet show people um, attacking immigrants in the street. Are these people that have taken your training? No. <coughs> Полностью откровенно на этот вопрос я ответить не могу. Скажем так, люди, которые участвовали в таких мероприятиях, есть и среди членов ансо. Вы имеете в виду морально или материально поддерживаемые? Морально поддерживаем. Мы это одобряем полностью, да. Что касается какой-то материальной поддержки, физической, то I wanted Dmitri to show me where his training took place, but he insisted that because of Hitler's birthday, he was being watched closely and didn't want to go to any of his regular hangouts. After our meeting, he went MIA. He turned off his cell phone, and my communication with the NSO came to a halt. A week later, 24 hours before I was set to leave Moscow, he called and told me to meet him in the lobby of my hotel. He said to rent a van, but wouldn't say where we were going. As we drove outside of Moscow, he constantly looked over his shoulder to make sure we weren't being followed by police. After a few hours of driving, we arrived and hiked about a mile into the woods. The location looked similar to ones I'd seen on the internet, where skinheads train in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Recruits had gathered from all around the country for a weekend of training and the annual initiation into the NSO. Устраиваем полосу препятствий. Ну, конечно, часть подготовки. Дело в том, что мы считаем, в данный момент в этой стране, при этой политической системе, уважающий себя русский человек должен быть постоянно готовым. It wasn't exactly clear to me what some of these exercises were supposed to be for, but these young recruits took the training very seriously. Идет этническая экспансия на нашу землю, идет замещение, как я уже сказал, замещение нашего народа на прежних чужаков. Поэтому любые формы сопротивления этому их можно только поприветствовать. Террора, насилие, взрывов, убийств, 
Все оправдано во имя собственной нации. Вполне логично э, вам рассказать, то участвую э, в работе этой организации, которую вы, собственно, сегодня посетили. А больше, я надеюсь, вы понимаете, я ничего вам сказать не могу. Почему? Сами не догадываетесь? These guys didn't want to talk directly about how they were applying the NSO training. But then I was introduced to Tsak, a skinhead whose nickname means hatchet in Russian. Tsak wasn't shy about his participation in street fights. What is the purpose of uh, going out and causing these street fights? Может быть, многим даже придется умереть. Что они должны быть просто к этому готовы, потому что начнутся беспорядки скоро массовые, уличные. И мы должны быть готовы к ним. Не толкаются, прям помогают. Тусак gave me a DVD to play on my laptop. He boasted that he'd created many of the videos I'd watched back in the dorm room, and he had plenty more to show. Можно развернуть, это очень хороший ролик. Музыка веселая, конечно. Is he burning his passport? No. No, he has a very problem with the passport. He has to go to the house. So who is this that they're beating now? Whatever happened to this guy? Did he survive? You seem to get a lot of pleasure watching these. Huh? You seem to like watching these. You get a lot of pleasure. Yes. Самое приятное то, что это как бы закрутил процесс. Я вот это вот съемки на видео. Это именно то, чем я вообще занимаюсь. Это сейчас моя профессия. Пропаганда. Человек посмотрел, думает, да, слушай, а красиво, я тоже так хочу. И пошел, кого не зарезал. Tsak's propaganda has a growing audience. It's estimated that over half of the world's neo-Nazis now live in Russia, between 50 and 70,000. <laughs> When the training was finished, Dmitry escorted me out of the woods, and I left Russia the next day. A few weeks later, Tsak was arrested and imprisoned on charges of instigating ethnic hatred and threatening violence. But in August, a video was released on one of Russia's most popular file-sharing sites, demanding Tsak's release from prison. It featured two dark-skinned young men in an unknown location in the woods, bound and on their knees. The men are gruesomely executed, one decapitated with a knife, the other shot in the head. A note accompanying the video also demanded the expulsion of all Asians and people from the Caucasus from Russia, and it called for the establishment of a new national socialist government to be led by Dmitry. The video quickly became one of the most, the most widely circulated internet videos in Russia. It's still not known who created it. This was one of the most difficult pods I've ever worked on. Not just because we were tracking down neo-Nazi skinheads and trying to gain their trust so they talked to us on camera, but as a reporter, it's a challenge to cover what these guys are thinking, what they're saying, and what they're doing without becoming an unwitting carrier of their message. The alarming fact is racism in Russia is on the rise, and violent attacks against immigrants are happening more frequently every year. 
Organizations like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the Sova Center in Moscow have all raised flags to draw attention to this issue. And now Current is doing the same. If you've got a comment about this pod or you'd like to give us your thoughts, please feel free to send us an email to feedback at current.tv.